Yeah, so this is our emerging topics in biomolecular magnetic resonance. Uh, we are uh, really much dedicated to present uh, frontier research in magnetic resonance of uh, biological systems. Um, this lecture series follows the uh, Gordon Research Conference policies. So um, please no private audio or videotaping of uh, our talks. And uh, if the speakers agree, um, we will record them and then um, upload uh, everything on our channel, which you see here. Uh, during the talks, you always have the possibilities to um, type in questions. Uh, please so, do so in the Q&A, um, 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 or via the Q&A icon of, um, of Zoom. And um, in the end, the, the chair will be reading out the, the questions um, to the speakers. Uh, you always have the chance to actually vote for your favorite questions. So give them some likes and you can promote them to the, to the top of the list. And uh, we'll work our way down from there. Yeah, so a few words for that. Then it is my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Kei Ruan. Uh, he's an associated professor uh, in the School of Life Sciences at the University of Science and Technology of uh, China. And um, yeah, he has been in the NMR field uh, for a long time. Uh, so he studied uh, in, at Peking University and obtained his bachelor and master's degrees. And after that, he moved to Johns Hopkins University uh, for a for his PhD studies. Uh, then he left John Hopkins and joined Pfizer actually as a postdoctoral uh, research fellow from 2008 to 2010. Uh, and then he was a staff scientist at the Beetson Institute for Cancer Research in the UK. And since uh, 2011, he's now an associate professor uh, at the School of Life Sciences uh, in China Bank. So, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Kay, for accepting our invitation. We're looking forward to your presentation. Okay, thanks to the organizer for giving me this opportunity to present our recent work on Emma guided threatening to lead evolution. As we know, let me change this one As we know, the protein protein interactions regulate many functions, biological functions specifically. So they present represent a large number of potential drugable targets. But the challenges of the protein protein infections are intrinsically highly dynamic and they have a long elongated and shallow interface which are difficult for the drug target. The a feasible strategy is to use it called divide and conquer. This will actually induce the threatening best drug target. The general idea is that if we cut the binding protein into half and we screen each sub individually, so in that case, the, we only need to sample a uh, sample space of around 29 uh, uh, compounds with a molecular weight of around 250. But conversely, if we are screening using a high super screening, then in that case, we are using a small a compound leverage of molecular weight of about 500 Dalton. And the possible drug like compounds are around 10 to 60. So that is why we have normally have a very low hit rate for isolated screening. But the, the fragment screen also have some limitations. For example, since the, the, the molecular weight of this fragment screen, they need to be detected by, by a physical method, for example, AMR. Uh, the first example is published about 20 years ago. Uh, uh, from best group at that time it was in the uh, Abbott in company. And so based on these fragments and eventually involved into a drug that is approved in 2016. And so far we have like uh, we have three drugs already approved and over 30 candidates in clinical trials. Among these candidates actually NMR uh, have contributed uh, significantly to this field compared to the other methods, and especially considering the current situation of AMR in structural biology. So today I would like to show two examples. The first one is we proposing no molecular weight drugs against the main proteins of SARS-CoV-2. And as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic is caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus, 
And so far, it has infected over 28 million people, and the mortality rate is over 3%. So if we take a look at the construct of SARS-CoV-2, it has several proteins, and these three are considered the, the drug possible targets. But the question is that to develop a new drug or even a vaccine will take over years or even 10 years. So a feasible approach nowadays is to repurpose the drugs that all candidates already in clinical trial or approved. And among those main processes is one of the uh, possible targets. And uh, the question of the challenge of uh, the repurpose of drugs against main protein is that first, it do not have any human homologue. And second, the, the repurpose of drugs are designed for specific targets. So therefore, it is unlikely to have such kind of uh, repurpose of drugs to fully match the interactions with MPO. And taking into account the fact that the chemical space is 10 to 60, but the available drugs we have nowadays is only about 30,000. So it means that weapon best approach could be a more possible way, right? Since we just uh, since we a small compound, then we have, have a better chance to fully match the interaction with that approach, even though the interaction is weak. So we first use the legal observed approach. Uh, the take-home message is that STD will give signals for binary only, and the one lucky will give vertical signals. So based on this method, we can we identify the three hits. One is nice, and one one is hit one and hit two. And then we apply the HSQC spectrum of the N-terminal M probe. Because uh, this protein is shared a very high sequence identity with SARS main probe. So exactly, they can transfer the assignment directly there. And based on the assignment and the chemical shift proportions, we can map the binding site of these two heats, nice with this area and it will bind to here. And based on the, the volume of this bucket means that we probably can have, uh, they have a larger compound which can still fit well in this bucket. So there first, so we search the, the repurpose of drugs containing all, uh, all as a uh, derivative of the heat. The first one is comorphal. This is uh, analog of lysine. So from this one, uh, this already been reported as a covalent inhibitor. So as expected, at a high concentration, uh, we can see two sets of spectrum. So it means that it's uh, covalent binding to the system there in the pocket. And also, the did inhibit the aromatic activity of the MPO to cleave the viral polypeptide. And, but the homopho is a covalent inhibitor. So we try to search more inhibitors that are not covalent, then we search the uh, repulsive drugs of no molecular weight still, but they are derivatives of PT1 instead. So we find the two drugs, one is called Benamostin, and another one is Amabastin. These two can inhibit moderately the enzymatic uh, activity of MPRO as well. Uh, so uh, I will not touch the, the other stuff. That's not, uh, uh, that's just biological studies, but not closely related to the MR part. But in general, we can say that using MR, we can identify no molecular weight drugs against the drug-covid mental cases using this uh, strategy. And this strategy intuitively can be, can, in principle, can also be applied to other targets. Then, in that case, it means that we can probably screen uh, several low molecular weight drugs and use a cocktail. Then, maybe more, maybe a more efficient way to suppress the viral replication. And in the, the second story is, uh, is about the dynamic nature of the binding pocket. Uh, as we know, the children domain usually you have three to five aromatic ring, aromatic radius that form a cage, which is called aromatic cage, to accommodate the methylated lysine or arginine. But the question is for PHF21, they also have a children domain. They have a very high sequence identity, uh, sequence similarity with PHF20, but this protein has a closed pocket. So 
We first solved the crystal structure of the three-form pH chapter 30 L1 and uh, find that they do have a, a closed pocket, okay, in the ground state. And then we titrate the methylated uh, DMEP1, that's a natural substrate of pH chapter 20 L1. And this peptide did, did bind to this TD1, okay? And also the chemical shape of compression means that it demonstrates that it's binding to the aromatic pH. So it then brings out a very interesting question. How could the close form aromatic pH of TD1 can recognize uh, its, its ligand? Okay, so we first we carry out the AMI relaxation dispersion experiment and we found that several radius proximal to the aromatic pH, for example, Y29 on this one, they have an unflattened relaxation dispersion curve. So it means that these radius are switching between two different states. The first one is the closed form uh, ground state, another one is the pre existing minus state. To see what the minus state look like, we ran a uh, MD simulation in collaboration with Professor Zhang at USCC. And it demonstrated, did demonstrate the two different states here. One is a ground state, another one is a more open state here. Okay? As suggested by the relaxation dispersion term as well. So we solved the crystal structure of DMT1 and uh, it was found that the DMT1, the peptide did protrude into the aromatic pH and they have a remarkable rearranged uh, aromatic radius here. But this uh, rearranged confirmation is similar to what we observed in MD simulation. We may then ask that since the Tudor White can recognize a natural subject, maybe it can also recognize small molecules. So we probably can find a small molecule, perhaps small molecules of this one. Really. Uh, so we carry out the protein observed uh, having that screening, the reason is that Tudor White has a very high spectral quality and a high pressure field. So we use this as a mistake. And we also screen over 89 cocktails with 10 compounds each. And we find some cocktails have remarkable chemical shape perturbations and then we titrate each individual, each component into PTD1 individually and then the dose dependent chemical shape changes demonstrate the binding site as well as the binding affinity of this. And the crystal structure also reveals that the, the this heat one bind to this pocket as well and also using the exactly the same confirmation. Okay, so it means that PHF20 L1 to the random use the same low population minus state to recognize ligand, no matter it's a natural substrate, a peptide, or a small molecule. We then carry out the structure activity analysis of PHF21 it one. So as expected, it will mutate the W50 and the Y44 and we, it, the binding affinity is abolished. So it's, understand, it's easy to understand, right? Because it's essential, it's not an uh, essential cation binding right here. However, when we mutate Y24 for adding or losing, the, the binding affinity did not change. Okay? But instead, if we mutate to W, it means that we have an enhanced cation binding reaction. But instead, of the binding affinity is getting weaker. It's even more puzzling that if we detect R49, this radius is not directly involved in the binding of the ligand. The binding affinity is enhanced. Okay, so we first solved the crystal structure of this Y24L mutant, and it actually adopts an uh, open. Okay, and this is also uh, predicted by MD simulation of this region. They are all in, most of them are in the open space. And for this Y24 W and the Y29 W double mutants, they have a blocked aromatic page, and they, we can also see it in the MD simulation. 
So it means that for the mutations, alters both structures and the complementary exchange. And the uh, binding affinity can be also modulated by the population of the open state. So in that case, if we can increase the open state population, we can enhance the binding affinity as well. Okay, uh, as a summary, so actually we, we demonstrate that PHF 20 l one to one can recognize DMT1 using the confirmation of selection magazine. And it also points out a factor that for some uh, targets, even if in the reform we have did not show any binding topic, but actually it can be it, the mind they may have a low populated mind state that's double. Okay. Uh, so we are running out of time, so I'll skip the the last story. That is just that we recently developed using this structure activity activity studies and then eventually we can develop a small molecule that is lead like compound but unfortunately there is a low accuracy mobility so it's difficult to crystallize and also because of the um, uh, intermediate affinity it also falls into intermediate exchange so we do not have any mr signal but if we use a, just a small amount of protein we can still observe the flowing signals of this ligand. So in that case, we can label, primarily label the protein, okay? And the best on this one, we can marry the protein, observe the chemical uh, pseudo contact shifts. And the best on this contact shift yeah, and a structure model, we can back calculate all these pseudo contact shifts and then we compare with the experimental observed one. The experimental observed one is actually using the flowing Test experiment and so uh, it's chemical uh, shift exchange experiment. Okay, so in that case, in the presence of the permanent labeled protein and dynamic labeled protein, the chemical shift difference is the bound state chemical shifts. And then, based on this one, we can filter out one possible one or two possible poles. And then, for dichloroethylene compounds, we have two different restraints for fluorine the contact sheets and then we eventually can identify only one single pose and then we compare this pose with the crystal structure of uh, yeah, the bromo domain complex with a soluble analog and this two structure are sitting so well with each other okay with this I would like to thank Professor Shi and Lu Wu at the USTC and our collaborators and the graduate students here, and the financial support from NSF and the most. At the last but not at the least, thank you for attention. Ready for questions. Thank you uh, for the nice presentation. So this is to remind everybody that uh, if there are any questions, please type it into the a Q and A box uh, at the bottom of your Zoom uh, screen. So uh, uh, while people think about it, I have a question. So uh, did you uh, quantify in more detail the exchange between the open and the closed state of the Tudor domain? So what are the exchange rates and the populations? Uh, and secondly, uh, are there any, uh, let's say mutations which are related to disease and which uh, change, let's say, the rates or the populations? The population itself is, uh, in the free state, is, the minor state is about 6%. Sorry? And it, uh, it, the low population state is, uh, has a population of around 6%. That is okay. quantified from the relaxation dispersion mm -hmm. level. And exchange rate is around uh, 600 hertz, I remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that because the relaxation dispersion most time can tell us we have two different states and the chemical shift difference, but so it's really difficult to, to predict the, the, the structure of the minor state to use chemical shift only. So that is why we use uh, we use molecular simulation instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the simulations fully fit to the crystal structures then? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the simulation is pretty, the simulated result is pretty much is very close to the extra structure. I think the MSD is around 1.3 to 4 astronomies. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so I have a, a question. You showed some ITC data in the in the project on the on the fragment discovery. So this uh, is entropic binding or enthalpic binding? Because you, you showed the KD, but in principle, you can get also the entropic and enthalpic contribution. Is this morally enthalpic binding? You mean the Chido one, Chido one project? Yeah, in the, in the, in the, in, yeah, in the, in the drugs uh, where the niacin and the niacin derivatives, where you show the ITC. Uh, it's, it's entropy data. It is still actually with that form uh, hydrogen bond with the, 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 the radius one of the, uh, the uh, carboxyl group there. And the rest are medical, are medical directions. Okay, thank you. Uh, so there is also, uh, there are also two questions uh, in the Q&A. Uh, the first one by Rolf Bölens. Hi Rolf. Uh, so, uh, the question is, does the uh, lysine and me one side chain stay protonated when binding into the pocket? In the X, in the X ray, we, we cannot see the proton signals though. But for M, the same thing with MR. But when we bind into the pocket, uh, normally we normally we think it's still still properly charged, even if it's a high metal agent. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, then the other question is, um, uh, why your 19 fluorine signal uh, goes away if you add some protein? Uh, it's because of the, it's in the intermediate exchange regime. So it means that if the, the, the Line with the proportional to the population of the free and the bound states. So if we add more protein, then the population is going close to like 50%. So in that case, the live burden is getting more severe. So that is why the flowing signal goes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, I guess these were the questions which were asked so far. Uh, Anybody from the panel wants to ask something else, or we're all very happy about the presentations. So I, I guess uh, that is not the case. So then I uh, thank you again, uh, both Vipin and Ake. Uh, very nice presentations. And uh, then I officially close it uh, for today.